to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in today's video, I wanted to explore the really fascinating topic of finding our intuitive gifts and our healing gifts through a Vedic astrology chart. Where do we see that? How do we see that? Can we see that? Yes, we absolutely can see that. And I've put together some notes the end of another busy day and I'm so excited to make this video. I just love unwinding with you guys at the end of my day and I know there was a lovely comment I got that um, someone had said that they like to unwind at the end of a long day with these videos and do you know so do I. I really enjoy this too. It just gives me a bit of time to go slower, change the pace of my day, relax a little bit and just look at something that's really interesting and you know because I wonder about these things I wonder about intuition and healing gifts and all aspects of life so I love to see how these things are expressed through a Vedic astrology chart so intuition let's take a look now there are three terms that I jotted down and I've done a little bit of a uh, little bit of research today not too much just a bit but I'll also explain where this idea comes from because well firstly it comes from a chart that I did recently for someone who has beautiful intuitive gifts written all over her chart and um, you know I, I could see that very clearly and that particular person has a lot of some of the things that I'm going to talk about here. The other place where this comes from is a piece of music and I'm gonna so let's let's jot some things down, and then I'm gonna talk about a piece of music that inspired this this uh, this concept and me to have a look at this concept. So I'm gonna write down the word clairsentience, clairvoyance, clairvoyance. I'm kind of putting a little bit of a space between the word clair because. You'll see there's like clear audience. Oops, audience. So just like in the recent meditation video I did, I jotted down the words meditate and medicate and had a look at the similarities between those two. Oh, and I must thank a very lovely viewer who watched that video and did some research and found the uh, Latin origin of the word and it turns out that both words stem from the term well from the concept of healing basically so that was incredible that was really great to see that um, you know someone was inspired by the video and did some research and came back that was so wonderful thank you so much uh, and and once again we've got this interesting thing happening here we've got the word Claire being a, a very key component to these words. Now, okay, what is clairsentience? Clairsentience is you get a feeling in your body, you know, or, or you just get a knowing. You get it in your mind, you know, you just, you look at someone and you say, yep, they did it. If there's a lineup of people and somebody committed the crime, you just have this knowing that it's him, right? It's that kind of thing. Or her, could be a her too. Uh, let's see, um, clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is that you can see, right? You, you, so here, clairsentience, you get a knowing. Clairvoyance is you get a vision. And a lot of people have a vision pop in their mind. I actually had a really good friend who saw a vision. She would see visions before they would happen. Um, and there's of course deja vu. Deja vu probably stems from this clairvoyance as well. Sometimes you can have a dream where you see something happen before it happens. There's all sorts of things like that. Uh, clairaudience, that's where you hear. So you'll hear something and you'll hear, I actually have a little bit of this. I'm more the clairsentient type person but I have a little bit of this and what it'll be is my own voice will tell me something. And that's kind of interesting because when is it just my terrible mental chatter and when is it, you know, something that I really need to pay attention to? So that comes over time and you have to build a lot of awareness and, and keep watching and paying attention to all these things. So I noticed this word Claire here and the musical connection is this, Claire de Lune. Now Claire de Lune is a beautiful, whoops, beautiful piece 
by the famous composer Debussy. I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And I looked up the meaning. Basically, I was wanting to possibly use this piece of music for an upcoming video. So do stick around on the channel because I'm going to be experimenting with different music and going outdoors and doing other things. So you'll have to bear with me. I'm learning editing and all that at the same time. So, but I really enjoy that. I have a lot of fun doing that. So I was looking at music. I was thinking, well, I want to use a piece of music. I want to use something French. And this Claire de Lune came up. So I actually Google searched what it means from French to English. And Lune, I knew this was moon. I knew this had a moon connection right here. But this actually means moonlight. So this is light. Claire is light. And I was originally thinking that Claire is clear. So it's like clear knowing, clear seeing, clear hearing. I thought it had a clear connection, which I'm sure it does. Uh, I didn't have t enough time to look up that one. So if anyone feels so inspired, please do feel free to look that up. But um, it really also means light. Isn't that fascinating? So, you know, what is intuition? This question of what is intuition and what is it to have an intu intuitive gift? One of the ways I see it is that you're very good at processing light. Perhaps you're very good at translating light. Um, you're very good at receiving the light and understanding it, you know, and comprehending it uh, and making sense of it. You, you have this ability with light. And um, I really wanted to make this point that your intuitive gifts and healing gifts are as unique as your thumbprint, right? So everyone, we've all got a unique thumbprint and they all, they're all very similar. You know, they all have similar sort of lines, but yet they're utterly unique. And that's the same for your intuitive gifts and your healing gifts. So when it comes to healing, and I think that's a big part of everybody's life purpose, I think we come to the planet to, when we take on various challenges, we take on various forms of trauma, we take on problems, and we go, well, I'm going to go down and heal that. And that's really what we're here to do. So I definitely wanted to make this point about your healing gifts and in intuition as being as unique as your thumbprint. I was going to say as unique as you, but that's still too general. And that doesn't hit the point home strong enough. This concept of these gifts being as unique as your thumbprint. Now that that is really making it concrete that your intuition, your ability to heal your own life is very unique and individual to you. And you have to figure that out. And you can certainly get ideas from someone. You can certainly be inspired by someone. I am. I'm always looking at teachers and healers and great people and masters. And I'm always being inspired by them. I'm always getting ideas from them. You know, but ultimately, I have to find my way. How am I going to do it? How, you know, because my life is unique as well. So... I think we've all got intuitive gifts and healing gifts, absolutely. But I'm going to run through some classic sort of, um, I guess you could say, planet, planets and planetary placements and things like that to look out for. And these are things that are just so obvious. And look, if, if they're in your birth chart, then you've got a particular gift to use this time round. But equally, I mean, we've got 16 Varga charts, so you're very likely to have a variety of these, you know, um, throughout your charts. So you've got access to everything I'm about to go through now. And if anything inspires you, you can also study further on that. Um, you know, I've gained a huge amount by seeing certain planetary placements. I might not have them, but I, as I read them and as I read about them and as I think about them, I think, oh, yeah, I need to bring some more of that into my life. So I will use my free will to create more of that. So let's say I'm not so in touch with my Mars. I have said that on the channel before. Oh, well, sometimes I read about Mars and I, you know, I have very Mars days, you know, and I'll wear red and I'll go forth and I'll get lots done. And, you know, so I, I, um, I'll tune into the energies uh, and, and make use of them. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at clairsentience. So that is your whole body just knows, 
your whole body just knows it. And that really is Kiki. Clear sentience. I'm pretty sure I've got that the right way around. Right, who's the head? It's the other way around. <laughs> I always have to make sure with these lovely little symbols. I like using the symbols. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I think it's more of a Western thing to use the symbols, but that's okay. I, I like combining the two in that way. Um, because this is a language of symbology, you know, and that's one of the things I love about astrology, that we are dealing with symbols. And these are shortcut ways to communicate huge amounts of information, which is fantastic. So let's have a look. Clear sentience. What's happening here? You get a knowing. Now, where do you get a knowing? Now, some people will feel it in their body. They will have a physical body reaction. Their gut will speak or their heart will expand or they'll feel something. People feel things. Um, me, of all these three, I, I'm more clairsentient. And for me, I yeah, it is a kind of a knowing. And I worked with an energy healer one time who was based in Hawaii. And I asked her because I said, I don't really feel anything in my body. And she was saying, well, for you, it's happening very fast. You don't need to. Your mind just picks it up. I'm like, oh, good. Because I, so she could read me and she could see. I quite like, as much as I like reading people, I also like being read, you know, and I've had a lot of that uh, in my life, being read by all kinds of different modalities. But let's have a look at this. So clairsentience, here you'll want a strong Ketu, which is the south node of the moon. Uh, Ketu also rules some important nakshatras. So we've got Ashwini, Maga and Mula nakshatra. So these are important nakshatras that you'd want to see uh, in your chart. What else is this, signifies a strong Ketu? Ah, did I say this? Did I mention this point about Ketu being in your ascendant? I should have done. I didn't. Ketu should, well, could be, could be. It doesn't have to be, but if Ketu is in your ascendant, in your first house, say for example, um, because that's really colouring you, who you are, uh, that, that covers quite, quite the landscape of who you are. So Ketu in the first house is a terrific placement. Ketu as your ascendant, or a Ketu nakshatra, so that's Ashwini, Maga, or Mula nakshatra as your ascendant nakshatra. Um, these are, are, are pretty big clues. Uh, we've also got the concept of, so let's say Ketu is not in your first house. It, it still counts. If Ketu is conjunct a lot of planets, right? And a good example of that is Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey's got Ketu conjunct a lot of planets in his fourth house. So... Ketu, that's a strong Ketu energy because it's conjunct so many planets. So, you know, yeah, I, I mean, that's that's giving a really strong, strong Ketu feel to the chart when that happens. In terms of um, healing gifts, I've got a couple of notes here, quick notes here, and that is Ashwini is an important healing nakshatra as well as Sattabhisha. These are the two that I believe are healing gifts. Ashwini, I believe, is a healing gift, uh, I, I believe, kind of for the physical body. And I have seen the charts of like doctors and surgeons and such people having Ashwini nakshatra, having a great Mars. Um, you know, Mars is something you definitely want to see in a surgeon's chart. Hands, they're using their hands. Um, Terrific eighth houses as well, sometimes you see. Satta Bishak is a classic healership star uh, or nakshatra, and that is. Satta Bishak, I tend to think, is healing the collective consciousness. So it's a slightly different type of healing to Ashwini, which I believe can be more the physical body. And what I'll do in this video is I'm going to leave a link to a video that I saw recently about a beautiful horse that goes into hospitals and heals people so I'll show you that because that's a, that's a very strong Ashwini connection and it's a very beautiful video I'm sure it's short please do watch it you might want to have tissues at the ready because it's very emotional uh, it, it will really you know if you need a catharsis if you want to have a good cry that's a really good video to turn to it is very beautiful it it makes me emotional anyway um, on this point of healing gifts, before I move on to Claire, what's the next one, Claire Audience, Claire Voyant, 
On the healership thing though, so I've said Ashwini, classic, Satyabhishat, absolute classic. Um, there's also the concept of the wounded healer. Now the wounded healer if, is if you've got, say for example, significant 8th house uh, activity, maybe your Ketu lives in the 8th house type thing. Um, it could be conjunct. Hi everyone, sorry the camera got cut as it tends to do. The time just flew there. I truly thought this video was going to be 10 minutes and that is not the case. I'm not going to try and make it short because I happen to really enjoy this topic so I'm just going to speak for however long you know it turns out. I'm not going to restrict it because I absolutely love this topic um, but I will shuffle along quickly as I can. I think it cut at the point where I was talking about the wounded healer. Quite interesting that it would cut out just about there. <laughs> that is kind of interesting actually uh, just as we were getting deep into the eighth house there and uh, and or you know Scorpio type energies right. Um, so a wounded healer can definitely be seen through difficult placements, um, things happening in the eighth house or in Scorpio um, you know and and that's that is amongst healers and you know the, the masters of, of this profession that that's um, I've heard some people say that that's quite the badge of honor to be a wounded healer and uh, I mean of course you know it's it's the ultimate alchemy it's the ultimate transformation of the darkness into light what could be greater I mean the heroes are coming out of here and that's that's Mars you know, Mars, 8th house Scorpio, Mars, right? It's the ultimate heroic act, isn't it? It's quite incredible. So, you know, if you've got some things there, yes, you could go through problems in life. You could go through trauma. 8th house, I definitely see trauma. But some of the very best trauma counsellors and, and people who uh, achieve a lot who help the world who help humanity I was just looking at some of the charts and I'm pretty sure Marianne Williamson has her she has a Rahu moon and I'm just about to start talking about Rahu moon she's got one in the eighth house let me just quickly have a little look at that now she's somebody who's truly helping humanity in a profound way yeah there it is so that's um, mm, that's that's really interesting so it's not She's had to go there and bring her intuitive gifts there as well. So now we're going to get on to uh, Rahu Moon. How about it? Let's do that. So clairaudience and clairvoyance. Let's have a look at what we've got here. So we've gone through Ketu. We've seen that, all right, Ketu is quite the clairsentient. Sentient, look at that word, sentient beings, right? Just being, just, just like the body without the head. You know, um, and as I've mentioned in other videos, I'm sure I've mentioned this a lot, the body without the head, they've found neurological cells in the heart and in the gut and these are very powerful uh, tools that people use to intuit things. You know, people look for a gut reaction, people feel their heart, you know, they feel the desire of their heart. Um, these, are, these are things that we can tune into and feel. So let's have a look at clear audience and clairvoyant. So now I'm putting these two together. Clear audience, clear hearing, or the translating of light through our hearing, and clairvoyance, clear seeing, or the translating of light through seeing. Why have I put these two together? Well, I've put them together because astrologically I'm going to talk about Rahu Moon. Rahu, the head. The head, this is the... So when you've got Rahu Ketu axis, we've got Rahu the head and Ketu the body without the head. So when you've just got the head, what do you have up here? You've got all the senses. So we've got seeing, we've got hearing, we've got tasting, we've got smell. Um, touch can be felt 
all throughout the body, okay? And touch is a Ketu kind of a thing because some people, and I have a friend who's like this, we went to a charity shop and she was able to touch items and feel what the previous owner felt. And she found this amazing cashmere jumper that she bought. She tried it on and she, she told me when we left, she said, this, the owner really loved this and you could see it was in incredible condition. And, you know, even I could tell that, yeah, this is amazing. Um, so touch is a ketu, is a body thing without the head. But the sense uh, mechanisms are all located in the head. And I was thinking about this today, and this is so fascinating. This is so Rahu, because Rahu is hedonistic. Now that word hedonistic, head, again, and, and the concept of being hedonistic is that you're just crazy for pleasures of the senses. You know, you, you want to drink champagne all night, and you want to buy tickets to the most fancy opera or ballet or whatever you know like famous thing that people are doing right so you you but you want the best the concept is you want the best or you want to see the best film or you want you know but it's that being hedonistic and it's like and you don't know where to stop that's very Rahu because Rahu just wants to consume and it doesn't quite feel satiated it doesn't feel full and it's that impulse and that energy to just go after something so clairaudience and clairvoyance is our senses right so a person can see things that other people can't see a person can hear things that other people can't hear and you put rahu together with the moon and i've seen this in so many charts these people who have this combination, um, and I was doing some research on it today, and I'll just name a couple. Uh, we've got Jim Henson, hugely creative man. Robin Williams, hugely creative. Stephen Hawking, right? He was a very brilliant mind. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kayan Rao's got it in his D9, and Kayan Rao speaks very favorably of this placement. Uh, so it's a really interesting one. Some people don't speak so favorably about this placement. Some people are like, well, you know, you can encounter strange spirits and things like that. Uh, that might be part of the training, right? You might have to train a little bit. You might have to develop your psychic senses. You might have to develop, you might need some psychic development or you might need to train this, okay? Because sure, you might be encountering some interesting things. But that can be trained and you can use this so beautifully. Uh, I really love this uh, placement and I think people who got it are, are very lucky. And I was thinking about, you know, people who have this, say, clairaudient, clairvoyant. Let's say you've got it in the second house. Um, well, actually, I did have a client who was like this. I'm pretty sure I had somebody who's a second house governed by Aquarius. So that could be that you're, you have intuitive abilities to bring messages for the entire collective for all of humanity you know maybe Nostradamus oh I wonder if we can get his chart I looked up Edgar Casey today uh, I think he had some quite significant K2 if I remember correctly but um, but yeah I mean you know it's like the, like this placed in the second house. It's like using your sense perceptions to bring information to the collective, to all of us, to make big predictions about humanity. Isn't that amazing? One of the one thing that I really liked, uh, one of them that I quite liked, was Robin Williams. I thought I'd just bring that up very very quickly. He had this lovely thing going on, and I thought this could be a good example of how I would read this if, let's say, I didn't know it was Robin Williams and someone just said, well, what do you think about this placement? So his is in the, let's have a look here, Rahu, Moon, and I'm pretty sure it's Aquarius here. So I'll put the letters as well, Rahu, Moon, in Aquarius. So a way of reading this, how I would read this, so let's say I didn't know it was Robin Williams's chart, 
But what I would see here and what I would say is that this person has a brilliant mind and uses his creative genius to help heal all of humanity. Because Satta Bishak, you see these are in, yes, Aquarius, but Satta Bishak specifically. Let me just double check. I do have his chart here. Yeah, both. Moon Rahu, Satta Bishak, right? So that's healing. There's brilliance, right? These two together create quite a brilliant mind. And what I tend to think is an open mind. So it's a very open mind because Rahu expands everything. So your mind is incredibly wide and expanded. One of the ways I used to see this some time ago, I think a couple of years ago, I used to see it as like a mansion, but the roof is off. So that was one of the ways I used to see it. But these days I'm kind of seeing it more as maybe like a studio or a workbench where you have access to create there, but divine divinity, divine spirits have uh, access to create there too with you. All right, that's why I think it's a very highly creative combination. The potential and brilliance and, and power of this uh, combination is so wonderful. I really like it. So Rahu Moon conjunct, it's like this brilliant person, creativity is here and healing the collective consciousness. And if you look at Robin Williams, I believe that's what he did. I believe he healed humanity through comedy, through the creative genius uh, that he was, you know, comedically, right? It, he, he was a comedian. But it was his creative genius. That was his form of creativity. I mean, there's so much to say about his chart and there are so many other placements and you can't really just sum up one person based off one tiny placement. So I, I totally appreciate that. There's so much that goes into analysing uh, a person's chart and I do like to spend quite a bit of time when I work with somebody, when I work with somebody's chart. Uh, all right, so the other placement that I wanted to touch on just very briefly, let's see if I've covered everything there. Yeah, so I've got to know, I mean, Rahu Moon in the second house, particularly so because you've got the senses up there and you've got the head there. It could also be first house is fantastic as well. Third house is great. But you can see Robin Williams, look what he did, having it in the fifth. Amazing. And wherever it is that you have any of these placements, right, that's the excitement of your life. You get to figure out, okay, how do I use that placement to its greatest effect? Am I using it? Am I even using it? And I can tell you, for so long, there have been so many bits of my chart that I just haven't been using. Now that I'm coming up to my Rahu maturation, you know, oh, I have to use now. I, I can't be uh, living in the, uh, you know, what is said to be the Ketu castle. I, I can't stay there anymore. I've got to go out into the Rahu jungle. And I really, really like that analogy, which comes from Ernst Wilhelm. I will quote him on that one. Uh, let's have a look at the last um, placement, which is Pisces. And I'm going to say Mercury. Mercury is an interesting one. So we've got um, Mercury. And the symbol for this, he's got his uh, antenna. And now when Mercury goes into Pisces, he's not so strong. Right? He's, he's incredibly strong in Virgo. He's, well, exalted in Virgo, right? Debilitated in Pisces, though. Is that a bad thing? Not at all. Einstein had exactly this, right? And I do think this is, this is a gift. I, I think this is an intuitive gift because it kind of switches off uh, or dulls the logic function of Mercury and enables you to go on some amazing journeys. So it enables you to go on some amazing creative journeys. It enables you to use those antenna. You will pull from beyond the veil. You'll so you know we've got ninth house truth here, and we got twelfth house truth here, right? Ninth house is Jupiter, yes, but this is the one where all of our five senses operate. We're still in the earthly realm here. 
But then this is why Jupiter is so wise, because he's got this covered too. He's got beyond the veil covered as well. So Jupiter knows both sides. This is what makes him so powerful and wise. And, you know, to have Mercury having an ability to stick his antenna and, and pull from beyond the veil and work with Jupiter, you know, what he can draw from there is, is really amazing. And that's, I think, what one of the key things that made Einstein so brilliant. And this is why it's really important that if you have a debilitated planet, that you don't worry about it, that you don't think, oh, no, this is a disaster. No, it's not a disaster. Don't feel bad about these things. Learn astrology and try to understand, all right, why is it debilitated? There's some reason for this. There's some reason for this placement. There's some reason why, you know, it. you, you don't just come to that and, and take a negative, seemingly negative piece of information and then stop. No, you've got to think harder. You've got to think more. You've got to you've got to look, you've got to innovate, you've got to use your mind and make connections and, you know, um, and my goodness, if you've got any of these, if you've got my Mercury in Pisces, if you've got, you know, Rahu Moon, if you've got Ketu with some of these beautiful uh, nakshatras, Ashwini, Mago, Mula, um, if you've got any Ashwini, Satabishak, any of these kind of things, you'll definitely be able to... Um, well, you make a, a good astrologer for a start, so that that's a good thing. It, it, occult things, divine things, creative things, symbolism, symbology, um, you know, ability to think beyond the box, ability to draw from the other side of the veil. Well, now that is the second time the camera has overheated and I think I'm being given a very big signal to wrap up this video. So congratulations if you made it this far. Thank you so much for sticking around on this topic. This happens to be one of my favorite topics and I can't believe that, honestly, the time flew as I've been making this. I, you know, intended 10 minutes. This has gone well beyond the typical astro chat limit. So but it just goes to show I really love this topic. I love talking about it. There is more to say. Uh, I feel like this has all been quite glib, actually, quite quite short. But, um, you know, this is a really huge topic. But to those of you who've stuck around, thank you so much. Also, thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, thanks to everyone who comments as well. I've been really, really busy. So please know that I read every single comment. Um, if I'm not able to answer it's, it's just because I'm too busy and there's too much going on but know that I read them all and that your comments flow into my future creativity so they're really really important to me so thank you so much to everybody who comments and of course everybody who subscribes so I'll let you get on with your day or your evening or wherever it is that you are know that there is lots more content coming different variety of content I'll be going outdoor, I'll be using different music, I'll be in shorter videos, um, you know, so if you don't want to stick around for the longer ones, you, there'll be shorter ones. And if you like these long ones, good, you know, um, that's, that's really fantastic. So I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.